Before you put anyone before you, you have to put yourself first. We are actually trying to create something to help man's community and help the youth think better and be positive role models. It's like, why would you not want to get behind us? Bam, doors come off, I see armed police in my house, wow. in my face. All I'm saying is don't shoot. Three, four. You know what, I need to do more like with my life, innit? Like I got opportunity in this land. <laughs> this is, you know what I mean? This is for the, the elite. He said, this is what we're doing when you get out. I said, cool. <laughs> we made it, man. Give him a shot. <laughs> and I just thought, yeah, let me just create something where I can spread what I've learned through the gym. Go in jail. Open up that, oh, this is life. Yeah. This is the real world. That's how I know I'm aligned, like, this is what it is, because I don't really get this feeling of nothing else. On today's show, we have the wonderful, the only Jim Busy. How are you doing, my brothers? Oh, great, thank yeah. you. Oh, you're right, yeah. Come on, man. I see you. Look at your jazz is already like comfy, man. Like, <laughs> you've done this before, my bro. Yeah, man. Yeah. Um, How are you guys doing? You guys found it all right? You didn't, you didn't, you didn't take too long to get here? No, yeah. no, it was calm. Did I, did I, I hope I didn't take you lot off your lot gym session today. I know you lot, no, no. Trained, you lot are training like seven in the morning. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, we took a day off. We took a day off. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, rest, thank you, man. Rest, Much rest. appreciated. Um, today's, today's, um, um, I wanted to have a conversation with you guys because I know. Um, I have known you for a few years, but um, you guys are, are doing some inspiring stuff at the moment and you have been doing inspiring stuff at the moment. Mm. I just wanted to kind of dive in and have more in-depth conversation with you about your souls and about the things that you're doing. So I appreciate the time you guys have taken out today um, to converse with myself. But now, I'm um, obviously I know you, um, but just for the audience, I know you guys don't really, um, jazz does speak much, you're, talking, you're a bit more subtle. <laughs> um, I would say you're more the ext extrovert and you're more the introvert, but um, yeah. for the people that don't know who you are, um, can you just give us insight as to um, Jazz and also um, Twan and Jim Busy, please, if you don't mind. Jazz, can you, can you tell the people about yourselves? So, my name's Jazz. My online presence is Jimbo or Jim Busy, Jimmy, whatever you want to call me. Um, I'm a fitness coach. Me and my cousin, we run a brand called Jim Busy, which is a fitness hub. Um, as we speak, we are just right now. We're just doing events, so group sessions, uh, female and male, and we're moving on into just women's only. Yeah. But yeah, man, like so, we returned in May, so it's like our eighth month back. We've done eight continuous sessions each month, and yeah, we're just building, man. We've done nine actually. Yeah. Including the gym shot one. Sorry, nine, yeah. Nine. Oh, yeah. What about Ton, oh, the people, the people know you as well. I, I know you do a lot of, um, they call you the, the, the intense coach, they say. I don't know, I don't know why, why they, I don't even know how I got that label. Please. <laughs> I mean, I'm Twan, also known as um, Long Vacation Online, but I don't know where you got that intense coach from. I'm really, just a stand-up guy. <laughs> well, stand guy. I think it's from him screaming and shouting at me in the gym, to be fair, so. <laughs> yeah, he doesn't play games in the yeah, gym. Yeah, the people are scared, man. They want to train, but they, 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 they're scared, man, to, to, to come. They, they think you're going to, I don't know, man, you're going to leave them empty. No, you've been to the, cl you've been to the session. Yeah, did yeah, I scream yeah. and shout? No, yeah. <laughs> you've been to the session. Did I scream and shout? So you know nah, what's calm down, man. Calm, man. sessions are good sessions. But yeah, no. Not really. It's beautiful, but before we kind of um, dive into more of the gym busy stuff, like I said, I, I wanted to kind of make this more personal, mm -hmm. away from um, rather than just business. Um, obviously, I know you from, as we call it, the ends. Um, since 08. 08. Since you, 08. You even put in time <laughs> in it. No, <laughs> since 05. <laughs> since 05. <laughs> yeah. um, I've known you from, from the ends, and obviously, like, it's when we look back at it now and look at the people that's come from the community that we grew up in, it's good that a lot of us are doing amazing things mm -hmm. uh, and doing what, but um, just to dive into to, to your person, to your whereabouts are you guys from, like country, like origin, um, the area, what, the passion, what passion? Now let's start with the ends, the area. So I'm from West Norwood yeah. and um, my whole family's from West Norwood. So my mom's from West Norwood, my dad's from West Norwood. Um, and yeah, I was brought up in an estate in West Norwood. Mm. Obviously, yeah, we used to be on that state together. <laughs> and um, yeah, man, just the environment I grew up in was a lot of like road man, drug dealers, some footballers here and there, rappers, 
yeah, just really that was just about it that we could see. Yeah, so I'm from the same area. My parents, my dad grew up in Peckham. Yeah. And my mum's from Vietnam. Vietnam. So I don't actually know where my mum grew up still. <laughs> wow. I'll be honest. <laughs> that's a, that's, I actually that's don't crazy. know. I've never even asked, but yeah. No, no, that's 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 amazing because the they always say like the the ends as we say uh, they shape us to to who we become rather mm-hmm. than inspiration from what we want to get out of mm-hmm. yeah, or just what we see other people doing in a sense. So I want to now kind of like jump into like Jim Busy as per se and say um, obviously the community unless they know you personally they know you for the stance of Jim Busy mm-hmm. and for me it's like it's, when I look back at the things you guys are doing I'm thinking nah this is amazing because not a lot of people um, do kind of do things for the community in a mm-hmm. sense so how did that beca- how did that start like um, was it what was the motivation to start that why, why did you say you know what I'm going to put this out for people what was the how did that be- begin in a sense um, so originally Jim Busy was born because when I was younger, as you know, I was fat, yeah, <laughs> straightforward. I was, I was overweight and, um, and I think that's where I got my sense of humour from because a lot of people used to always cuss me. Um, everyone, like a mum, dad. Do, do you feel like, do you feel like being, do you feel like you was um, insecure about your weight? Never. Are you hit behind the jokes? Never. Never. I was never insecure. I've always been confident. Yeah. Like, even when I was overweight, That's I was always, I was always, yeah. So I used to just be good at cussing, like. <laughs> anyone that cussed me, I didn't, never used to take, I never knew I was fat. Really? Even though everyone used to cuss me and say I was fat, I still didn't even believe I was fat. Yeah. Same way being short, I didn't know I was short. I just thought, because I was just so confident, I thought like, I was just like a six foot man, do you know what I mean? So, but yeah, so um, I think, so I started going on holiday like 011 or 12. Started going like Ibiza's, Iannapa's and that with the lads. And then I think 013, I was going to Ibiza and my cousin was like, rah, you're not going to get no girls in Ibiza looking like that. So I was like, what? So after that, like I kind of, cause I started going on holiday, I started seeing henchmen and that. I started clocking on. Did, 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 did you, you still didn't feel secure at that point? You thought, no, like even before when I was going on holidays and I was I was the fattest of the bunch. I had my top off more oh, than you, anyone else. Let me tap into that because that's is is it, it shows like your your mental your mental strength from a very young age, as per se. Because as we all know, yeah, like we know we go in the gym and what's the people that people say all the time? I want to be like you. Mm. Oh, let me be like you. So. For you looking at people and not having that mentality from a young age and being yeah. like, I want to be like you, mm. and you're still very confident yeah. in who you are. I think that's a... That's a, a yeah, I, just, I think that comes from my mum as well, though. She used to always drive a lot of confidence in me. Mm. And I just always used to believe that I can do anything. I'm as good as anyone else. And I never really used to look at anyone different. I used to just think, yeah, everyone's just the same. But that point in time in 2013 is when the switch hit and I was like, yo, I need to get in the gym. And then... I just went gym for about well, eight why, months why, why, straight. Why did, why did that switch here? I think because I just, I could, you know, like, I'm very aware, in it? Like, mm. f- me personally, like, I can see stuff and I'm like, okay, like, I just see, like, even, like, trends or whatever. I just see stuff. I just, because I was going on holiday so early, I was at like, 17 when I first went on holiday. I was seeing these guys looking good. But I was all hate. I was like, right, I'm going to jump, man. I'm going to in the gym all day. Like, what's wrong with them? Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't really... I didn't really understand it, but I used to see and I used to think, raw, I could see like they look good, that like, the gallon was liking it, all these sort of things. So I was like, yo, I need to get in shape. So it wasn't really like a thing where health or anything like that, because I could always run. I was playing football. I never smoked anything like this. So I was always semi healthy. But yeah, I think that's what drove me to actually start going to gym. When I started to go to gym, I started to like, because obviously I was a trouble you as well. Like I used to always trouble people and annoy people and just cause fuckery. So when I started to go to the gym, I started to respect myself more, which led me to respect other people more, which then led me to like, just feel better and just, I just felt great. And I just thought, you know what? Um, when time went on, I was just on the road, just doing what I was doing. And then when I got to like 22, 23, I was bolo. And then everyone was just like, yo, everyone just kept asking me questions like, how did you do it? Did you do that? These times were running with Stormzy and Section Boys and Krepton, all these guys I was around, yeah. So I was kind of like not popping, but people knew who I was, they could see me. So 
when people saw the transition, they was asking bare questions like, "Raw, how did you do it? Da, 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 da. You look good, da, da, da. like it was all just coming in and all that." And then I just got to the point where I went to Jamaica, 2017, the first time as a, like a adult, like about my parents, and it just made me realize that, "Raw, I'm from this Great Britain, and my people are from Jamaica, where it's like where people are struggling." Yeah. And I was just like, you know what? I need to do more like with my life in it. Like I got opportunity in this land. And I just thought, yeah, let me just create something where I can spread what I've learned through the gym and just spread it to the masses and hopefully help other people in their situation. It's crazy, sorry. Let me interject there quickly, yeah. Because I'm just listening to you speak and you're, from what I'm gaining, it's like going back home was like the pinnacle point. No, you, definitely. You, 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 went on, you went on holiday, do you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. You've not changed your environment. Mm. You went on holiday, but when you go back to, this is what I always say to guys that are successful or, mm. or trying to do, like, never forget where you came no, from. No, facts. That's, that's, and I definitely forgot where I came from because I was semi-racist, like, <laughs> two black people. <laughs> Like, literally, yeah, bro, I used to actually not like black people at all. Like, I used to... Why, why was that, though, man? Because, like, when I used to do business with, like, white people or people that's not from our background, yeah. they used to... Business always used to be, like, just it's smooth. 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 It's like, it's smooth, smooth, bro. <laughs> and then when I go and deal with my people, it's always like, oh, they want discount, taking <laughs> long, they're bumping me, yeah, they're yeah. doing this. But obviously, I didn't get it, innit? I just... I think the white man got me because I was like, yo, like I kind of, um, I kind of like felt like a little hatred towards my own people. Mm. When I went back home and I was like, I was in a great position, like I had bread, whatever. I went back home. I was like, yo, this is how my people are living. Like I was like, raw, this is crazy. Mm. So then after that, I started to educate myself. I never read a book, like obviously I read it in school, but until this point, 2017, I had read no book, nothing. I was just on the roads, whatever. So when I started to see like how Jamaica was, I was like, bro, I thought I was in 97. Yeah, yeah, when well, in 2017, I'm seeing people drive mad cars, yeah, yeah, yeah. people are just begging. Like, I'm just like, yeah, yeah. yo, what? I was just so confused, yeah? yeah what's going on? So then I started to educate myself and started to learn about colonialism and mm -hmm. learn about why black people are like struggling and just like how life was set up, how we got to where we got to. I just started to do history, started to read books. And um, yeah, when I started to level up in my, my, my understanding of the world, I was like, yo, I love my people. Like, I wanna help my people, I wanna be a leader. I wanna try to help as many people as possible transition because if I was like in that position, there must be a lot of people that kind of think the same. They may, people may not even know that they yeah, yeah. dislike their own people. Like I genuinely didn't even know that. Do you f do you feel like yeah, like let's say for example, obviously we grew up like you said West Norwood. Do you feel like that plays it and it was like semi races or business? Do you feel like if you grew up in like let's say Beckenham, mm. um, a nicer area, yeah. do you feel like that would change your mindset and how you saw our people or how you yeah no maneuvered? Yeah, yeah, I believe so. So I feel like because. Me, I'm a good, I'm a good guy. I would say, but I would say like, <laughs> I would say, nah, I am, man. Like, I've got pure intentions, innit? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I may have gone through things when I was younger and yeah. done fuckery or whatever, but I've always had a good heart. Yeah. And um, I feel like just growing up where I, where I came from is like it shaped me to be like a bad boy. Like, not, not, I'm, I'm a good guy, yeah. <laughs> but, it, 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 but <laughs> disclaimer, but it shaped me to be a bit rough and not have it from no one and yeah. be on it to fight all the time and all these sort of things. And I think even going to our school, Stanley Tech, I remember like the first day of school, I saw someone get robbed. Yeah, I know, I know. And I was like, yo, no one ain't robbing me. Like I would die, get what I'm saying? Like, so I just think just having that mentality of like, raw, no one ain't robbing me, I would die. Is like, if I was from a different area, I wouldn't have to have them sort of thoughts, you know what I mean? So I could just, be my pure self, so yeah, I think it does shape you a lot, so. You know what I wanted to kind of um, tap into is because, did you feel the same, Tom? Because for me, I always say this to my friends, like, like every human in this world is trying to survive, innit? As much as you may think it's so, a lot of people's actions aren't personal to what we do. It's mm -hmm. just based on survival. If you look at it, did you feel like also coming, raised, coming from where we, we was raised, do you feel like you had that mentality of, you know what, I need to survive, or because of everyone's likeness, I need to be a particular type of way to survive in, in this, particular um, area that I grew up in? I think with me, I would say I, I'm a part of, I would say I'm a part of like, I'm a product of my environment. Okay. 
in in both a negative and positive aspect. Okay. Like okay. what Jazz said in terms of he's not a dickhead, isn't it? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm not a dickhead. Yeah, yeah. I know that for a fact. But in terms of on the positive side of things, I'm more open now. I'm more open minded into learning and no, why do you have understanding that different of, things. I'm not I'm not why why is that even the words you describe it with, like it's very like uh, no for example, you know I mean? why, that, do you, why do you why do you feel that way? Uh, cool. We grew up in yeah, the era of happy slaps. Do you remember? <laughs> yeah. Do you remember? Do you remember yeah. them eras? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. So yeah, yeah. those are the days when <laughs> you're trying your hardest when you're on that back of that bus. So just make sure you're not getting boxed in the back of your head. Yeah, yeah. That way you don't have to go off. Do you yeah, get what I mean? Yeah, but yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't really want. I didn't. I'm just using that as an example, though, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. But in terms of like being a product of my environment, you see. Like the positive sides and the negative sides of things. So you see the people who are who are like I say, who are our age group, mm. who are doing very well for themselves, and that could be legit, not legit, mm. but they're doing well. Yeah. Then you can see the same people who are our age and even some of the younger boys who yeah. they're just outside on the roads. Yeah. You know when you're with them or see them, something could possibly go in the yeah. wrong direction. Do you get what I mean? Yeah. yeah. And whereas that yeah. like, like, I won't hide it, like, you know I've been to prison, so yeah, yeah, yeah. it's a different thing of, in terms of being a, um, how can I put it? Like I said, at court, I was a product of my environment, yeah. so me going in jail proves it, innit? Yeah. Like, I grew up in it and I ended up being an example of, I, be, I was a statistic, innit? So yeah. it's mm-hmm. like, in hindsight, I think going in jail, I would say I was taught a lot of things and I taught myself a lot of things and I learned like, how I live now. I could have changed, I could have changed my direction I went in. Do you, do you think it's, you do you think I mean. it's a lack of, lack of like education or like is it a lack of like knowing how or is it just learning from your own mistakes per se? Yeah. When you say education, it could be uh, in Basically, school. like education could be something that you've seen, right? Like, so it could yeah, be yeah, like yeah. a role model, like your dad or yeah, like yeah, a teacher yeah. or something. Mm-hmm. And then being taught is like, maybe like an older saying, yo, do this this way, mm-hmm. or do it that that way. Or it's like a lot of times, some people don't have those things. And yeah, yeah. the only way to learn is from their own mistakes. Mm-hmm. If you mm-hmm. get what I mean. So from your perspective, would you, what would you say it is? Is it the lack of being, having a teacher around or, or a lack of just no one to show you the avenues I think, of what to take or you just just being in the environment and it just sometimes the environment you can't help it yeah, yeah when i when i speak to certain kids or i go to like schools or whatnot and you have certain kids that i'm like you didn't stand a chance yeah if you get what i no, mean it's, it's like true, it doesn't true, matter how, what your mom told you mm. who your mom told you, you you didn't stand a chance of like your dad's not around your mom's never at home um no one's telling you nothing yeah. so the mm. likelihood of you becoming part of the statistics you say is very very high so in your case how would you say i think you to that road? in my case i would say i was um i was very um how can i put it i was i would say i was a bit ignorant mm. and a bit naive mm. in what i was doing when i was growing up because yeah. in the back of my mind because it's a product of my environment it's something i see every day like my brethren's they're outside they're gang banging they're trapping some of them and then the other side my brothers are footballers yeah. high life do you get yeah. what i mean so in my mind i right, cool I can make money mm-hmm. like these guys and live like these guys mm. that was my naivety towards yeah. it do you get what i mean i never you never you when you're doing what you're doing you don't think oh yeah i'm gonna get caught i'm gonna get caught you don't think like that that's in the back that's the full that's not in your brain cells at all yeah, yeah, yeah. do you know what i mean but so go in jail opened up that oh this is life yeah. this is the real world do you get yeah. what i mean so i would say that's what kind of in hindsight helped me a different um thought, pra- thought we'll, process we'll come back we'll come back to that in a second um, um jazz you were saying in terms of like the the passion and you obviously um torn you can touch on it a, a bit more what yeah, what was what, what fueled you how how did you think you were telling us the story how how that came across in terms of jim busy um, it. Yeah, I just I got a passion for training, like by itself. Anyway, yeah. so like I love fitness. Um, I love that we can 
I call, like fitness is like a language that you don't even need to speak. So it's like, I can train with someone who doesn't speak my language. Yeah. So I just always loved the connection that it brought to the table. And um, and yeah, just like what it does for you, like it's, it's, it's so much positive benefits of training, like physically, mentally, energy-wise. Energy yeah, have an influence exactly. Yeah, yeah, quite, so quite with, yeah, yeah, with him, so we was training from together, bro, I'm not gonna lie. This guy <laughs> has, bro, always had a six pack. Yeah, like, oh, okay. This guy's always looked good, yeah. I don't know how, yeah, but this guy's always looked good. And I remember, um, I think he was on tag when, with his first case when he went to jail. Yeah. And um, we used to just train every day. Like, we used to just go to the gym every day, train, 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 train. And Carla, he's always been pushing me and helping me in the gym. And, um, yeah, and I feel like when he went to jail, he just turned into a savage. Like, yeah. like he was just doing, them, like, bro, I'm, I've done a thousand burpees today. <laughs> I'm like, what? Like, what the hell? Like, he's like, yeah, I've done this, I've done that. Like, I'm just like, yo, like, I can't do that kind of thing. But yeah, his, he was just always that guy, just always showing us that there's there's new levels to this thing in the gym. And I just feel like um, when we created Gym Busy, it just aligned perfectly. Yeah. So what sparked? Why, why did you like? Because I think I was I was there for your first um, the first one you did in Crystal Palace. Yeah, yeah. Thinking, like what sparked? What for? I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna run with this. Um, I okay. think so. Jim Busy was like so. I just knew when I come from Jamaica that right, I need to do something. Yeah. That's gonna help man's people, and I just thought it has to be something. My brother was like, "Right, why don't you do something with the gym?" So I was like, "Right, well, no, it's true. I should do something for the with the gym." And I'm saying, if man had a, if if we had a better role model or someone who was doing what we're doing now back then, I bro, we would have been monetizing from early. But obviously, it was just trial and error. So we just I said, "Right, we're gonna create a clothing brand, so that when people go to the gym, they can wear what we wear." That's what the original plan was, and um. I was rapping at the time, yeah. yeah. I was just, rapping. yeah, bro. Right, just this, and like, this video up, yeah, like, it's no video, video, it's no video. Just couple of songs. It's couple of songs. I'm lit, though. I'm gonna with the video. I'm lit. No, no, I'm lit. I'm lit. I'm lit. I'm lit. I'm lit. What? I was rapping. I was rapping. I was rapping in the studio, and I was like, one of my bars. I was like, oh, it's hard, hard, Jimbo, aka Jim Busy, because like they used to call me Jim Busy when I was on the road. Cause I was so busy, so they used to be like. Jim, you're so busy, like Jim, busy, Jim, busy. And I used to love that name. Like, yeah, Jim, yeah, busy. Yeah. Like, I like that name, you get me? <laughs> so um, it's funny that like that name comes from me being on the roads and yeah, doing what I was yeah. doing. And then when I done that bar and I was rapping, my cousin heard it. He was like, that's what your thing's called, Jim, busy. Really and then I was like, bro, that's hard. I was like, bro, we're busy in the gym, Jim, busy. I was like, that makes so much sense. <laughs> like, well, it was so funny because it come from something negative per se. Yeah, yeah. And we we we, we positive, yeah man when we trained uh, we moved it to a positive and then yeah we started as a clothing brand um, launched in January 2018 and then um, yeah we just started selling clothes whatever and then slowly but surely when we were selling the clothes it was like we're missing something man like there's something else like we're still training to, like as in in the, in the house then we was like yeah we need to start doing group sessions and then. We um, decided to do trench work, which was a free community session every week on Saturday, Saturday in Crystal Palace. It was free because we just made it free. So we was like, we was like, oh, um, let's create something where, because obviously we're selling clothes, we want money from you. Mm -hmm. Let's create something where we're giving back and it's like we're actually just, you know, spreading the actual message of training and just do it for free. So that was just our, our plan. And we just put a foundation from doing a free session every week and we used to just run down the track. We started off with like three or four people, slowly build was having 50, 50 people every week. And then after that, um, we created a ladies class, which was twice a week. We had all the gallum in the end looking fit. Yeah, you know what I'm to, yeah. Had all the gallum in the end looking fit. Shout out to the girls that um, supported us back then. And then, yeah, and then, that's that's how the training sessions came about. Was was Twan out of were you, were you out of prison at this nah. point? Or? When it first, I'm gonna. Not a lot of people know this. Yeah. I remember. I think I. I got out in, of prison in April or eighteen. Yeah. I remember speaking to Jazz. Must have been. December, maybe November, or yeah. seventeen. Yeah. And I remember I was on the phone to him myself. And I called him and I said, oh, 
listen, I'm getting out soon. I need to build a phone. Mm. Like, I had no, he'll tell you, I had no intentions of going legit when yeah, I was getting yeah. out of jail. None at all. Yeah, yeah. And he was like, bro, fuck that. Yeah. This is what man's doing. And he sent me the pictures of it. And I said, all right, cool. Yeah. I didn't even question it. Did I just said, all right, cool. Was no, it, I just said, right, cool. Is it because he, you had a bond with him already or because... You trust his vision? What, no, no, was that was, he did? said, this is what we're doing when you okay. get out. I said, cool. Yeah, yeah, and I yeah, left yeah. it at that. I didn't yeah. question the conversation. We didn't speak about it after that. Yeah. And as soon as I got out, and then he was like, yeah, this is, come. This is what we're doing. What was, what, how, how did you, end, what was the reason that you, you don't have to go into details as you wish if you don't, but what, what made, what, how, why did you go with Joe for the first time when you've had this idea of trying to motivate someone? The first time. Trying to help someone. Um, no, no, no. So the first time he went jail, when he first went jail, there was no positivity. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> That's there, the, was, no, there was no the positivity. The first time when I went jail okay. in 014, yeah. bro, I, I was trapping out of control, bro. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. you could look at me and know either this guy's doing something, yeah. he's a footballer or something, but yeah. he's trapping out of control. Yeah, yeah. You get me? So I had no, he'll tell you, I had no intentions of ever thinking legit, legitimately. Yeah. Okay, I didn't. Okay, okay. That was in the back of my mind. Yeah, yeah. One conversation with him in 017, he said, "Yeah, this is what we're doing." Because cool. when you, when you, but the first one was so amazing. Like the first one, no one, no one, you're never gonna expect. I was 21. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I mean? I was mm -hmm. fucking sleeping, um, 5 a.m. Bam, doors come off. I see armed police in my house, wow. in my face. All I'm saying is, don't shoot. <laughs> wow. You get me? Then they obviously they told me what I've been arrested for. I'm like, yeah, cool. Yeah. It is what it is, isn't it? Like, did, I did, accepted did you, it. Did you, feel, did you feel like... How did you feel in that moment where I, you're thinking, okay, I'm gone for... I wasn't pissed I was getting nicked at that time. I was pissed I got caught. Okay. You know what I mean? Because in your mind, you're like I said earlier, you're not going to ever believe you're going to get caught. Cool, yeah. It's not in a... You're not thinking about it. For a while, I don't know, you guys do know, um, there was a where we didn't get a gym busy yeah. anything for like a year three or two. Years. Three years, three yeah. years. What was the reason that you stopped? Why did you think, oh, let me just carry this on? One of the reasons, I went to jail in 2020 January. That was, I think I went to jail like oh, 15, January 15th, January 14th. That was unfortunate still. And then obviously he had his son, so, Time yes, changes, uh, isn't it? Lockdown. Your so, responsibility yeah, so changes. And then 2020, COVID. Lockdown. So basically we had, so I don't know if you don't know, we've done a mass, two massive um, charity sports day events. Yeah. One was in Palace. 2018 yeah. and we had like, like 2,000 people and we raised like a thousand, thousand pounds for a charity called Mine, which is a mental health charity. Yeah. Um, we had like, I can't lie, that's when all the superstars came out. Shout out, I ain't gonna make <laughs> but we had a lot of celebs there that day, and yeah, man, I wanna say thank you for that. But um, the next year we scaled it, went to Crystal Palace, done it again, massive event um, for the community, like family day out, all of that stuff, and that is coming back next year. But um, yeah, so we had plans of 2020, it would have been our third year of doing a bigger, the main event, charity sports day for the ends. Um, we had all the classes, map. we had like a proper roadmap for 2020. So then obviously lockdown came, he went jail, and like, I was having a kid. So I was like, yo, I've spent, we've spent so much money into Gym Busy, and we have, we're not in profit. So I was just like, it got to the point where I was like, yo, I need to just make sure my bills are paid, like my son's coming, and um, my partner's in jail. Good question, because um, a lot of the time when when people are trying to do something, when they have a spark or they have the energy for an idea yeah, yeah. or something, and um, as adults, you never not have responsibilities. You mm. never have responsibilities. But when such a responsibility like a child comes into play, um, I have personally have seen it many of times where it kills a human spark. Mm. Um, not because of, um, in, not intentionally. Just the risk, saying, the risk factor, the, the risk, risk factor, factor starts. Risk factor, yeah. Risk factor, right? Did you think that was a contributing factor? Yeah, there? man. Like, I was just thinking, like, yo, I got a mini me coming, like, I ain't got no bread. Like, I ain't even making bread. Like, my whole plans for the year has been destroyed by the government. COVID's here, people are dying, fake news. He's in jail. Like, 
It was just going downhill. So I was just like, yo, I started to learn to trade online in that time of lockdown, started making money, paying the bills, whatever. And I was just how like- did you, How did you overcome that? Because again, it's, we're talking about it casually, right? And the reason why I want to kind of touch on it is because it's not an easy thing to navigate up here in your mind. Yeah. Do you get what I mean? It's like, it's, as in doing, as, 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 as in as spinning the blocking, or, or as oh, taking yeah. all of that in. Yeah, like your spot. When you're thinking responsibilities, right? I'm just talking about we as men um, have huge responsibilities mm. um, to to provide, to look after, to care, to yeah. always make sure, and also kind of like um, also have an emotional intelligence yeah, yeah. in the same context. So when you're going through that, you're thinking, all right, I'm trying to do this. All of this is happening around yeah, me. Yeah. Yeah, COVID, like you said, everything. And yeah. then have a little one. Yeah. And I'm thinking, all right, my, well, I'm trying to do yeah. to minus. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? With all those contributing factors, how, how did you do oh. that mentally? Like, it's a lot of pressure, man. Like, even this day and age in the Western world, there's so much pressure, bro. Like, bills, pressure of even looking the part, pressure of going to certain places, pressure, pressure, there's so much pressure. Even driving a car, driving, congestion, tickets, shopping. Bro, there's so much pressure of this life in it. So I just think at the time, obviously Jim was helping me out, but at the same time, I was semi going mad. Like I was like, <laughs> bro. When you say semi going mad, what do you mean? Bro, I was, <laughs> if you're in the, if say if I was in the lift, yeah. The, lift. the next two stops of the lift was madness. Yeah. Like meant like, I remember this guy, I remember, I remember I used to go sleep here, yeah, bro. And I used to just wake up in the night and just go pray. Yeah. Like, I used to just be like, bro, close to like every day, just thinking like, what that? Like, Cause I really didn't want to go back to my old ways so much, mm-hmm. but the pressure of life was heavy. So I was like, I used to just pray a lot. Like, I used to always just randomly just wake up like middle of the night, just go pray. Um, and just, yeah, just, and obviously my content, I was known as Ha Ha Jimbo. Mm-hmm. Obviously, I'm a funny you, in it? Yeah, like, I don't, I, I don't even mean to be funny. Like, I just be funny somehow, yeah? And um, I was just like, yo, I'm going to do the comedian thing and, like, make people... I used to make people laugh online anyway, naturally. I'm just going to play into this a bit more. So I started to do, like, skits and that. I just feel like I was losing, like... People don't... I, I don't really... I haven't really said this before, in it, but I feel like I was losing myself. But that's not actually me, because, like, really and truly, I'm funny, but... I'm just a cool dude, innit? Like, I don't really, when I look, I can't even, I, I've never watched back any of that year. Have you? Never, I've never, I can't, I can't. Like, right, I just feel cringy, yeah, bro. Like, okay. I was watching, even someone post, people been posting me recently, I think I done something mad. I think, what I do? I went into the road with the boombox. Like dancing and what's no one's like, like obviously it's funny yeah. and obviously like people still laugh and it's funny like it's not like oh you're a dickhead you walk around in a dress or anything like that but i just feel like to myself like yeah i was kind of like not me and i feell like i was losing me and then um yeah i just kind of just had to just how did you bring yourself back in what did you, um what i took a break mechanism? i went to dubai I was in the... Well, was this straight after you had your son? Or... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it was still. It wasn't. <laughs> it wasn't like obviously. We're not here to. Shout, but I helped him though. Like, shout out so you don't even realize a lot. Yeah, of shout out to my mother, my child, man. Wait, it was mad. But... She held it down, man, and like yeah. Because, because the reason why I'm, I'm asking that question because. Like I said, looking at that without understanding the context of where you're at mentally, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's easy to point fingers Bro, at you. are doing something. You know crazy. what it is? Let me, sorry to cut you. You know what it is? And I learned this in jail. Yeah? Before you put anyone before you, you have to put yourself first. Mm. Whether you have a child or not, you have to put yourself first. Because if you are not in the right state of mind, mm. you're, you can't function. Mm. Mm. So you can't be there for a newborn child when your mind is somewhere else mm-hmm, mm-hmm. like you're there physically yeah. but mentally you're not there you know what i mean mm-hmm. him so, going in dubai mm-hmm. helped him i saw it yeah you saw it happening yeah. and i'm in the, i'm did on i'm just like, on the phone do you not look i'm on the like, phone yo, he's telling me i'm going to dubai i'm like what are you doing you're just about to have a you yeah 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 like, bruv so i can't my, my think son was like what when i went to dubai my son was like two months three months but it got to the point where i was literally about to go mad like Next up was mad now, you get what I'm saying? So this is 2020, my son was born in June, so I think September went to um, Dubai. My brother went to Dubai to live and he was like, right, just come up for a couple of weeks. So I was there for like 
eight weeks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was there for a little bit still, like it was. But you know what? That time in Dubai, I took time off the social media because I was heavily on social media, just doing fuckery. Um, took time off social media and yeah, just literally, I wasn't raving. I was praying. I was, I was like, a little cleanse. Was a big cleanse, bro. Like I literally offloaded everything. And when I came back, I was literally on stuff yeah. like, like yeah. routine like i was like yo this yeah. da, 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 da. i don't do this i don't do that i wake up at this time i do this i do that like, i was like a machine yeah. so then when i came back i just started to just literally just get myself together make bread i got myself in a better position i wasn't doing gym busy and i wasn't even online i was like a ghost bro i was just like chilling a bit he was in jail i would just get myself together and i was like yeah just you know what next couple of years i'm just gonna sort myself out and yeah that, it worked wonders and yeah. this is what i'm saying so when, like i said when you tell someone the story and it's kind of it's so easy to be like oh what are you doing bro the backlash i got online was yeah. crazy what are you doing in Dubai? I just had a kid. Remember when I had my when I had my son? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was yeah. Lockdown. I pull it online, yeah, so yeah. everything was online. I had my son. Mm. Yo, I was so gassed. Like, yo, this is my blessing, my baby boy. So I was like, yo, show not showing him off, but I was showing off the fact that I had a son. So everyone knew I had a son, bro. I remember this is the first time I hit hundred k views yeah, yeah, yeah. when I had my son. So it was like everyone knew I had a son. So then now I'm in Dubai living. <laughs> <laughs> They're like, wait, yeah, hold yeah. on, you just had a son. Like, everyone just that. messaging me, chatting rubbish. Mm. People are messaging, messaging the mother, mother of my child, like, chatting rubbish to her. Like, it was crazy. I was on it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But like, everyone you know me. Let me tell you what it is. You have to listen to the person. Not yeah. people don't listen, you know. Yeah, yeah. When, when someone's talking, a lot of people don't listen. So mm. when I spoke to him, I'm, I'm just on the phone. You know, I can't see him or nothing. So I'm speaking to him, and he said, listen, bro, I'm losing my marbles. I need, I just needed a break. Mm, mm, mm. I said, cool, I, I get it. Okay, yeah, I yeah, understand. Yeah. If it's going to bring you back to what you need yeah. and to be there for your son, cool, I will ag it in it. I, I know yeah, and I was blessed. It. When I went to Dubai, I was chilling with millionaires. Yeah. Like, every single day, bro. Like, my version out there, gone. Yeah. Owns gyms, yeah. owns coffee shops, owns shisha shops. <coughs> so, he doesn't. Tris, Tris, yeah. No, I was with Tris, shout yeah. out Tris. But our friend out there in Dubai, yeah? yeah, yeah. And, um, yeah, like, he didn't smoke, he didn't drink, he didn't party, just multi, prayed every day, like, and I was just like, just so close to him, mm. I started to pick up what he was his on. Habits, yeah. habits. His habits, the way he thinks. So when I come up to the UK, I was just on what he was on kind of thing. So it was just, it was just, I actually, I, bro, it was either that or the Morsley, so boy, yeah, yeah. I reckon I picked the correct decision still. So what happened the second time round? I'm just curious. Oh. Because the, like, the first time round, it's an unfortunate incident, bro. So I'm thinking, okay, you've, you've learned the first right, time, so how did we get to the second time? Let me tell you something, there's more, there's more than us in the room, so I'm, I'm going to say it so everyone can hear me. Yeah, yeah, See, yeah. when you were younger and your grandma or your mum or your dad said to you, they don't like you hanging around that person. Yeah, yeah. Listen. <laughs> Listen to your family. Yeah, 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 yeah. Put it this way, I, I answered a phone call. I shouldn't have answered. I've been dodging. I won't say his mate. We're not calling him. Yeah, my, yeah, yeah. my mate at the time. Yeah. I was dodging his calls for like two weeks. And he would tell I don't dodge people's calls. Yeah, yeah, I answer yeah. anyone's call. I don't yeah. give a fuck. Mm. So I dodged his calls for like two weeks. Then one morning, he rang me in the morning and said, yo, can you help me? Me, like a fool, said, yeah. Literally, from that phone call, within an hour, I got nicked. Wow. Wow. Of me coming out my house, five minutes of me being in the car room, I got nicked. What was the, what was the luck, gap? Bro. Was it just bad luck? Bad luck. No, you know it is. You make your own luck, innit? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so yeah. I come out my house. I don't really want to say too much, but mm. I come out of the house, sat in the car. Bear in mind, I'm on license. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Police are pulled up. Bam. Nicked. Yeah, wow. Did that, did that, like, obviously, because you went out the first time, you must have come back high, energy high, spirit high. Did that, did the second time knock your, your mental black hole? Did no, you feel like... Is, because I've been in jail before, mm. it's, it was easy for me to adjust. So, give or take, I would say probably the first, where was it? Where did I go? I went to Thameside. Mm. Thameside induction was like Guantanamo Bay. <laughs> I swear <laughs> my life was... Yeah. <laughs> just, just, as soon as I got off that yeah. induction ring, I banged out with one of my 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 my, um, my brethren. Yeah. 
who from from the Evans, from, but yeah, I won't really say his name because I don't think yeah, a lot of people not, know. But when I was with him, yeah. I said to him, he was like, oh. Obviously, our conversation was like, what happened? So I told him, and he was like, bro, you lot was doing well. Mm. But when I explained to him, I was like, yeah, we we're doing well. Just said it earlier, but at the same time, we're not gauging a lot of money from what we're yeah, doing. So yeah, at the same yeah. time, I'm telling people, oh, man, I have to pay my bills. Yeah. At that time, how old was I? I was 27, 26, 27. I did it. I only knew one way, mm. which was going back to what I did. Mm-hmm. Do you get me? So, and I was taught, and I even taught myself when I was in jail the second time that like, you can't really have one foot in. Mm-hmm. You have to understand that even if you have one foot in in, in what you're doing, there's going to be a time and a place where you only have to get caught once. You can get away with it every day of the year, mm. but once, that's yeah. once is enough, isn't it? Once is enough. Mm. So, and that once was my day when I got arrested again. So from that then, I was just like, bruv. But your, your mental was still kind of... No, mom, I've... Or did you feel like... I've never really suffered from, like, having a weak mindset. What's your, what's your, what's your, what's your technique? What's, how, with me. How do you deal with it? Uh, with me, I, 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 have, I understand the variables, isn't it? So... If something's bothering me, if I have more than, say, four things bothering me, I will differentiate them from what's bothering me the least and what's going to bother you the most. Mm-hmm. Whatever is bothering me the most, I will sort that out straight away. Mm. And I'll work my way what up. What about you say you have no control about what's bothering you the most? You have to have control because you're thinking about it. It might be external. Oh, anything outside that's yeah, not in your hands, yeah, you can't control it. Yeah. You just have to let it be what it is. Like, like, it like it if someone, like, say, for example, someone in your family might be sick or unwell. It's out of your hands. There's nothing you can do. Do you get what I mean? So, but in terms of that, do you, don't you think it's easier saying? Sorry, I'm not. I'm not challenging you. By the way, I'm just having a conversation. Do you think it's easier saying that in terms of when emotions kick into these things? So, for example, the, the external factors that might be bothering you or might not bothering you as in stressing you, but it mm. might be, let's say, like you said, your grandma or someone might yeah. be. Yeah. Um, it's very hard to be unbothered about that. If you, mm. get, no, no, if you, if you get what I mean, so those are little things you would. They don't. With me, they won't play in my mind, mm-hmm. but I'll think about it. Say, I spoke to my mum or my yeah. dad, I'm like, oh, how's so and so? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you enter that conversation, finish. I might dwell on it for 10, 15 minutes. And okay. then I've got to remember, look, I'm still stuck in here, so okay. I can't let what's going on outside affect yeah. me inside. Because I think probably like four people that I knew close to me died when I was in jail. Oh, wow. Oh. Without me even, and remember, you can't go to the funeral, mm-hmm. so it is what it is. The reason, why, the reason why I ask this question is, again, I always relate it to myself, um, and like we're all friends and whatnot. I sometimes, things get heavy for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do you know what I mean? And I try to find different avenues of expressing myself. Or, so the fact that you said you, you don't let things get to you, I'm like, well, like, I want to I wanna, I wanna learn something. Let me tell you, bro. I, I want to learn something. If, we're, if we have stuff to do on a day, he'll be on me, but I'll be relaxed. Yeah, yeah. Like so, he would more, I won't say he would stress, but he would more be on what's going on yeah, more than me. Yeah, yeah. I'm more of the calm. Okay. Yeah, the people's person for all I've known. Mm. Does that make mm. sense? So obviously your purpose is within people. Mm. Does, that make, does that make sense? It's within people in whatever avenue, but it's, it's lovely to hear that you lot have found that purpose within people in your different ways and coming mm. together and happening. And, and I feel like it's going to bring you bring doors that you um open get into doors that you haven't potentially been before because you might think you know what like that's when i actually the thing about if you have this cash what what next yeah, you know yeah, what i'm yeah, saying yeah. because everyone thinks oh uh, my, aim is to, my aim is to buy this house my yeah, aim is to buy this but that's not a purpose no, you facts, know what i'm saying facts, facts. once once you get that what next yeah, yeah, yeah. Do, do you know what i mean so i think i think what you said there key thing about um doing it for the people because I see some things it even makes me smile in a sense where um, I think I came to when you did your Gymshark event and um, in Regis Street I came to the event and what was so beautiful about that day is because I saw a lady I know you don't recall it she had a had a um, she had a stick she, came, yeah. she was handicapped yeah, MS, MS. like I was because I, I was I'm an observer in it so I might not say much when I'm out but I take in everything so I was watching everything going on and I was watching people's energies and attitudes and I was watching, I was thinking, like, right, these are the men from ends. Like, this mm. woman is a, probably a mother of three. She probably got grandkids. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? She's less abled, but because of your touch with people, 
she's left the house in the cold at eight o'clock mm. with no driver, no nothing, mm. made her all the way down and, and that for me was touching. Do you get what I mean? Mm. So I can only, and I'm not even taking part. Yeah, <laughs> Do you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah. So I can only imagine the amount of people. Yeah, man, it's like a, it's a fit like, a feeling in it, like I don't, I'm not really a science man or anything like that, but <laughs> energy, chemistry, yeah. feelings, all of these sort of things is real in it, and I feel like I'm at my highest frequency mm. when I'm delivering a session or when I'm coaching or when I'm motivating people. Mm. So that's how I know I'm aligned. Like this is what it is because I don't really get this feeling of nothing else. Do you know what I mean? So like even like people touching on. People coming to our sessions from all different races of life, all different paths, disabilities. Make sure you look come to our sessions as well. Don't be scared to pull up at a gym busy session because listen, we are actually helping you. We're here. we're not trying to we're not trying to kill you. We're trying to yeah. grow you in it. So, but yeah, make sure you look come. We got a session next week Saturday. I thought I just plugged that in. But yeah, we're just like just to see people come down and be actually physically impacted from what we're doing. It's a feeling that you really can't even describe, man. You can't. I, 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 I certainly agree. Like, I, I, you can't. But in relation to like like this, and, and I'm happy that you guys are here. Um, would you say you lot are, are a good mental space um, in terms of yourselves? I, I also, just to touch on it, is Jim busy just both of you? Because I've seen when I come to your sessions, I see several other coaches. Mm -hmm. What's their involvement? Mm -hmm. in um, and yeah, so it's a family brand. It's a family brand. So every all of our coaches are all family. So my big brother, my cousin, um, Tuan, obviously, my cousin Dob, Dom Vos, who is a mm. ex-professional, one of the best players of to even come from the ends. Yeah. Um, so yeah, they just basically help us out when we do have our sessions and we do do our live events because both of us can't run it, just two of us because there's like 100 people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, they just help us out and when we do grow, they'll be getting paid from the business as well. Yeah, no, that's amazing. And, and, and I'm guessing they're, they're fully dedicated to the vision, of course. Yeah, man. And, and, passion as well. and they never like ask for money. They never like ever question anything. Like, And that's a lot of love, man, like, to just it's come on board and just push the same, like they see what we see, man. Yeah, yeah. man. You know when your grandma would say is this thing it like takes a village to raise a baby. Yeah, so it's, yeah, it's the same. It's the same. It's the yeah, same idea. Yeah, Jim is like, the baby, man. Yeah, Jim is the baby. <laughs> and, and just one man can't do it. You need no facts. People to kind of like to nurture it. And yeah, and touch on that point as well, yeah, because I feel like obviously we've done a Jim um, Jim Shark collab. Shout out Jim Shark, which was like wasn't planned. That just yo know, God just provided naturally. You made it, man. Jim Shark. <laughs> yeah, you're right. <laughs> yeah. Just visualizing one of us on there. Might be Twan though, because he's a better. <laughs> he's a bit too. <laughs> he's a bit too. <laughs> and um, I just feel like. Cause we're so not, not, I wouldn't say popping because listen, I hold your applause. I'm, I don't, I don't, I don't even believe that we've even, even we got off level one yet. So, but a lot of people obviously like read what we're doing and like give us a lot of love, but we still need support. Like I feel like you know, like when a rapper does their things, like, oh, he's gone, yeah, he's blown. Like, you know, he don't need. Listen, we need you. We still need the, the support of the community. We still need you lot to post. We still need you lot to comment. We still need you lot to pull up to our events because we're not there yet. Like, you may see us, everyone online, just like, yeah, like helping us here and there, but we still need more, man. It's not, this is just the, the this is just round one. So we've got 12 more rounds to go. So if you lot see us doing our thing, we still need your help. It's not the end, of, we ain't finished yet. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. If I had to give one advice to the younger generation, I'd say pick your friends wisely and yeah, understand like the people that you're around shape you, mm. give you energy, mm. and will help you get to the next next the next level in life. So yeah. make sure you know who you're chilling with. Make sure you know who you're you're eating with. Make sure you know who you're spreading that energy with because it just is a trend. It's, it's transferable. Yeah. So yeah, man. You are the company. You are the company. I like what you said you in terms of outworking yourself. You have to outwork. A lot of people look at other people's competition, but. You're, you're your you biggest competitor, Before, right? Before you outwork anyone else, you have to outwork yourself. Work yourself. Nah, yeah. man, you guys have been super, super, super inspirational. Like, for me, I'm just sitting sitting here thinking, um, the growth's amazing. Hopefully, like, 
in a year's time, we're having a whole different types of conversation. Right, listen, from a year's time from now, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm pulling up outside, <laughs> having my Aston or my yeah, Bentley, yeah, 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 and listen, I'm not wearing a tracksuit. Nah, yeah, I'm wearing like, a suit. Cause I, <laughs> nah, we can have a whole different conversation. For me, it's been inspiring. I hope the people watching there um, um, can inspire. And the, you're going to see the guys again on the show, man. But I just wanted to give an insight to what they're doing. If you wanted to do what they're doing, just gain an insight to, to, to the trials and tribulations that these guys face and how amazing they are. Um, until next time, man. That's the full of conversations. Thank you. We started in 2018. We had a long break. Um, alhamdulillah, we've got a second chance at our dream. We've been back for a year. And yeah, man, in that year, we've um, accomplished a lot of things ahead of schedule. So yeah, man, we're just thankful. And we appreciate everyone that comes out. Every month we do our events, it's always sold out. And that's because of you lot, so we appreciate you. Um, we wouldn't be here without you. So yeah, man, thank you. Big love, yeah. And there's many more to come. And also what I want to touch on as well, that obviously we're all special and unique in, in our own ways, but we're all equal. We're all human. If we can do it, you lot can do it. If you've got a dream, or you've got an idea, you've got a vision, chase it. No matter what obstacles come in the way, just keep going, man. Yeah? So yeah, good night everyone today. I know telling people how you feel can often seem like a burden. But there's absolutely no shame in getting help if you feel like you're hurting. And yes, we all have our personal battles. But by ourselves, we don't need to have a war about it. You'd be surprised at how many people will come and join you on the front line, ready to support. You just have to talk about it. In a safe space, we can conversate, educate, and then learn more about it. And I'm not just talking about money moves. We have to highlight the deeper issues too. Because a lot of us have suffered or are suffering. Who agree with